initially artists were not so respected and so valued in Cameroon and in Africa. People now get to realize it's not a lazy guy sitting somewhere and making images. Yes, right. It's a serious people. It's a profession. Yes, it's yeah. something serious. So I think with that, there is a new way of looking at the artist. Welcome to my podcast, It's Africa Time. I'm Sonia Karl, a copywriter, editor, curator, and art lover. I created Africa Modern to bring the creative power of the various people from Africa to you. On my podcast, It's Africa Time, you will meet artists, designers, architects, and academics who will share their stories and unique perspectives with you. I'm so excited to start my podcast in Limbe, in the southwest region of Cameroon, a two-hour drive from Douala. In today's episode, I welcome the painter Blesa Fick, whose career is about to take off. One of his paintings recently got sold to the United Nations, and art galleries in Nigeria, Germany and other countries are showing his work. So, let's get started. It's Africa time. Your name, Glass Afrik, is this your real name or is this an artist's name? It's the artist's name. Actually, my real name is Venue Bless Venue. I'm originally from Kumbu. So, Venue is a, Kum is a name from Kumbu. And Blaze is my, my first name yes. and then Venue. So I, my surname and my second name are the same. Yes. Now the name Afrik came in by friends. Living in this time and making arts, there's a lot of Western influence on the artistic practices here in Cameroon and I think in Africa as a whole. And because there is a lot of Western influence, there's kind of like a deviation from African culture and African art. So you see a lot of people making art, but the image is not really rooted in African culture. So I took a different trajectory when I started making art that it has its roots in Africa. The imagery has the African element in it, even though I use modern tools like acrylic and paint brushes. But again, you see the African vibe and the African energy in it. So because I was doing that, friends started calling Afri. Afri added to my name, Blaze Afrique, to give the artist's name. Afrique was some sort of like an adjective that describes the kind of art I make. I yeah. see, I see. Very interesting. So, maybe you, you already talked a little bit about this, but maybe we can hear uh, what was your trajectory to become an artist? What, how, who inspired you? Who supported you? Who, or what, let's say, what did your parents say? Okay. <laughs> Basically, I am done with high school in um, I'm done with high school 2010. So during this time, I'm teaching mathematics. I'm thinking of what next do I do with my life. I come across a Brazilian art professor who doubled as a missionary, Paulo Lemos. Mm -hmm. So it happens that the Catholic University organized an art workshop, and in this workshop, Paulo was the tutor. And since I had always had the interest of art and drawing and making images and it was just a like part of me throughout primary secondary school I always love to draw and make images when I'm alone when I feel depressed I just go ahead and make some images so when I heard about this workshop I, I just said let me just go there since there is a side of me that is artistic you know so I went to this workshop and I happened to be the youngest person. Paolo looked at me very young and he was like, everybody seems so old, but you're too young. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I show you, you want to be. I said, yeah, I have an interest in art. I want to, I want to be here. I want to do this. Paolo had seen some of my paintings in a restaurant somewhere because I was painting, but just like not really professional touch, not really. And I, so he said, ah, Blaze. Blaze, uh, Blaze, I think I know this name from somewhere. I think I know this name from somewhere. So when he saw me in person, he was like, uh, I think uh, there is something about your, your drawings, your paintings that I saw and I was like, this is a young person that has something in him and it needs to be developed and refined and presented to humanity. And he said, Blaze, you know what? Uh, what do you want to be in, in life? I said, okay, for now I'm teaching mathematics, but now I want to become a medical doctor. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> so, <laughs> very classic 
<laughs> yeah, because that's what many, many, many parents want their children in Africa, especially children who do the sciences, to become. And I had this dream of becoming a medical doctor, you know, to save lives. And so Paolo looked at me and said, young man, I think you were born to be an artist. That is very sweet. I, I, I don't know, but I have the feeling that in you there is an artist. You shouldn't think that you can only touch people's lives if you become a medical doctor. You can become an artist and with that you can still impact lives. And so it was about the third or the fourth day of attending the sessions that we had at the college university. And Paolo looked at me and said, Blaze, I can teach you to become an artist. I will teach you everything you need to know for free. All I need is for you to provide the materials. If you choose to be an artist, I will teach you for free. This is a Brazilian man. He was about 60 years at that time. Mm -hmm. So he said, I'll teach you everything. Go home, think about it. And if you decide to be an artist, come back to me. So I went throughout the night. I thought about the whole thing. Then I said, but this has always been with me. Even, I, even though I did sciences in school and I've done well in my studies in school and have good grades and... But this art has always been there. It's been uh, like accompanying me all through. Maybe it's time I embrace it. Maybe it's something that is calling. Yeah. Maybe I should embrace it. So I went back the next day, told Paolo, I'm going to be an artist. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so that is how I got introduced into the art world. That's when I got to realize that art is not just a hobby. You don't just do it to pass time. It is something that you can do. It's a serious subject on its own. It is not for the feeble-minded. You really need to like love it and do it and give your life to it. And I said, okay, this is a part that I'm going to take with my life. The next four years, we'll see Paolo and I working together. So we did a clay modeling. He introduced me to uh, artists like from art history. He gave me a lot of books, websites to study and I did four years with Paolo and started a studio yeah. in Bermuda. I started painting. Then the American Peace Corps started coming and I started selling my art. But then I felt like it wasn't enough. I needed to do more academically when it comes to art because just working with Paolo, I don't have any document that yes. can attest to the fact that I studied art. So I went to the university and studied art. To be honest with you, most of, most of my, my, my lessons were things I already knew. I grew up with a single parent, my dad, so just dad and I. And after high school, my dad was like, oh, go ahead and do whatever you want to do. So when I decided that now it was art, he had no, he just said, okay, you do your art. Some years have passed and you did, of course, you have some serious success now. You are self-promoting and you are at the same time cooperating and yeah. working with galleries. Maybe mm -hmm. recently also in, in Douala here in Cameroon, mm -hmm. but also in Lagos. Mm -hmm. When you look at this, do you think these galleries really help you? Is this the only way to access future markets or is it now in our days maybe a little bit difficult to, to work with them. Being an artist, I realized that I, I need so much work, so much time in the studio. And to go out there and try to sell art, at the same time try to think and create, at the same time try to source for materials, I had to cut some of that work and leave it to some other people. Even though once in a while I still get to sell some art directly from the studio, but the galleries are really helpful. They are helpful in marketing the art. You know. It's always a risk you now because sometimes these galleries are not close to you. You cannot just walk to the gallery and meet the galleries and have a chat. Sometimes these galleries are far off in Lagos, Nigeria. Maybe I, I had another gallery in Munich, Germany, sending art to them. I don't have contact with my art anymore. I cannot tell them return the art when it doesn't sell. So I just send the art and it stays there. Oh if, my, yeah. Okay, if, that's another thing. If it gets, you tell me, I go there and take care of it. <laughs> If it gets sold, it gets sold. If it doesn't get sold, well, then they have to keep it until it gets sold. And again, I realized that in order to, to be more effective in pushing across the ideas that I share through my art to the world, I need people. I can't do it alone. I need people to assist them. What I've learned uh, during my stay here now in, in Cameroon is that the people and everybody uh, who is, yeah, 
talking about artists and arts, they, they are very respectful uh, for the artist's work. They really cherish your work as, a, as an individual contributing to this culture. Yeah, an artist is a somebody. Yeah, yeah, it's somebody. yeah. yeah. This, yeah. This, this, is a, this is a new wind that is blowing. Okay. Uh, initially, artists were not so respected and so valued in Cameroon and in Africa. People now get to realize it's not a lazy guy sitting somewhere and making images. Yes, right. It's a serious people. It's a profession. Yes, it's yeah. something serious. So I think with that, there is a new way of looking at the artists. Very interesting. So would you love to explain us uh, a little bit more when we look at your artworks here? You have really, as in that very particular political situation in where we are, you really, you, you're talking and giving messages about refugees, the environment, mm -hmm. uh, asylum seeking, mm -hmm. and uh, many more topics like mm -hmm. uh, war. war and, uh, and Migra corruption. Migration, corruption. For a Cameroonian person, it is a little bit too difficult to be <laughs> too political because this country is not... Yeah. the freest in the world, let's yeah. put it that yeah. way. So I, 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 it's very uh, courageous to do so. <laughs> I don't think uh, everybody does. Or is it a tradition also to the, be political in this art? To begin with, to me, the gift of art is something very special. And is something that should be used for the good of humanity. Initially, I was like every other artist. But I realized art is not just decorations. It's a weapon, and I choose to use this weapon to fight. Initially, the first time I showed this work in Douala, the galleries who was in charge of curating that exhibition, she was having mixed feelings, you know? She was like, please, we are in Cameroon, remember? This might not be well received, and it's an exhibit that I've invited political people to. And I told her, a clear conscience fears no accusation. If they get affected by the images, by the messages my works carry, then they should do something about it. They should change. But if they see that there's nothing wrong with it, then okay, then it's fine. And she was like, I doubt if we are going to sell even a single painting. You know what happened? Every painting that we exhibited got sold. They bought every piece. And then the lady came back to me and told me, Blaise, I was wrong. I thought they would not receive it, but they received it and they're asking for more. Because of that, I said, okay, I can do what I want to do. When the crisis in Cameroon began and people went on the street to protest, when they go and demand from those in authority, this is what we want. And that is when power is shaken. And I said, ah, this is what I will use to tell the stories. So I said, I'm going to start painting protests. I, I want to read some of these things that are, are, are really speaking to me is, for instance, no human is illegal. Legal. That is a, a great message, I think. <laughs> Refugees are not criminals, or like here is written, your enemy is not the refugee, your enemy is the one who made him a refugee. I've, I've read others about <laughs> corruption and so I don't want to go on and on and on, but uh, I mean these messages, I think they, they are universal. In a world, let's say, where being a refugee is something that can happen to you. Yeah. And I think this is also really, uh, I like it that you put it straight <laughs> on your paintings and, and uh, there is no doubt about it, no guessing. <laughs> And that is something I like uh, so a lot. And could you also have a little explanation on these faces? Okay, this looks African to us <laughs> as Europeans, but yeah. I think there are meanings behind this. We just don't get it. Yeah. Maybe you have something to tell about this. Okay, the faces are inspired from African art because I want that when people encounter my art, they have the feel of Africa in it. They should know this is done by an African and probably an African who has touch with African culture. I want to continue with the tradition of Africans to push out what Africa has to contribute as art, artistic objects to the world. I don't want to like make images that don't have the African 
energy in them. That's why I choose to make use of African masks. Then I a bit like modify this mask and then they become a character. Then they, I give them a body and they become a character. And then they participate in this protest that I paint. Yes. You know? I make use of maybe geometric signs and shapes so because I see that there's a lot of geometric elements in African arts too. The Boa mask from Burkina Faso, you know. You see a lot of geometric work and so I borrowed that and brought it in into the work. And again, the color. I bring in a lot of colors because African arts is colorful, has a lot of imagery and all of that. I just bring this in and then I try to make these images as original as possible because I also want to have an artistic identity as an artist. I want people to be able to see my work and recognize it. Everything, I, as I can say, everything in my art is original. <laughs> original, like created by me, invented by me, brought on the canvas and assembled like this. Because I'm painting protests, you see the characters, they carry plaques, and on the plaques I have the written information. Somebody who encounters the work can always get in touch with that. And these paintings are not images that you see in a glance. You have to stay with the work a bit in order to appreciate it, in order to read through the text, in order to get what I'm talking about. This is what I realized. As an artist, you must also be very careful when you set out to make art because you can lose your health in, in the process of trying to deliver as much work as possible. My paintings are not paintings that are done fast. They take a lot of time, long hours of work. I always tell people, if you're interested in my art, you have to be patient because I have to take care of my health <laughs> and myself. I shouldn't be losing sleep because I want to please customers, you see. So, even though I have that demand and people wanting that work, I need to tell them, I always tell them, be patient. When it's, when it's ready, I will let you know. It's been about 15 years in this field. If uh, by now I'm having the success, it's a product of persistent focus and hard work. You know. Thank you so much for staying with us till the end. If you like what you're hearing, please like and subscribe to never miss another episode again. You can also subscribe to my monthly news, The Fufu, on africamodern.org and follow me on Instagram. The upcoming episode will be from Douala, Cameroon, where I meet the founder and president of the Douala Art Center, the Princess Marilyn Douala Mangabel. This is Sonia Karl for Africa Modern. I'll see you next time.